All right, all right, all right. What's good, everybody? You know what time it is. It's time for our daily trade review for the day of 10 5 22. And today, what we're going to look at are the two trades that I took on Nas 100. And both of these trades resulted in break evens. So let's go ahead and jump right into them. So we're going to go ahead and hit the C play tool. Boom. I'm going to go back in time. We're going to go down to the 15 second because that's where I entered off of. And look at these trades. They're beautiful, right? They are absolutely stunning. Okay, so as you can see on this trade, what ended up happening was price pushed down, pushed down, pushed up, right? Broke. So MB1, technically, I should have been entering here for MB2, but you, you, you know how the story goes, y'all. The spread, the spread, the spread, the spread. So maybe I might start slightly reconsidering what other pairs I want to trade. I did trade this because the spreads weren't, they were pretty tight before, but liquidity obviously in the market. So I got slipped and then I had to obviously move it up a bit. And so what I, what I ended up doing was is I saw price starting to come up. Okay, great. It pulled back. I still held and it came up and it broke this particular high. And so right when it broke that high in that those few seconds I had, I had to think to myself, okay, well, what's going to happen now? You know, like it looks like double NB. So what I did was I moved it to break even. And as you can see, I took a break even on that and then it fell off the cliff. But it definitely was a valid trade for me because we had the tap in to a demand zone, and then we had the break of the previous structure, and then we buy stop the second MB, right? Because we validate this first MB, then we uh, the second, we buy stop the second one, and we did that. And we're shooting for a one to one. Now we just got to break even. Okay, great. So I got off the charts for a little bit, went and did some work, and lo and behold, I got another alert. Well, actually, I, didn't, I guess I technically didn't do any work. I was actually looking at this website called Code Cloud, but don't even worry about that, y'all. So I saw another one. I, I started looking, okay, well, what's the zone that we're looking for? Okay, great. Got this zone on a higher time frame. I believe it was a five minute. Yeah, it was a five minute, as you can see. This up candle right here. So then price comes down, it shoots through it, it dings off my alarm, and I'm like, okay, well, I mean, today we're overall bearish. Price is just going down. It's going to keep going down. It's not going to stop going down. So we have a good reason to keep going down. So what did I do? I got on the charts and I was looking for a sell. And I got in this kind of prematurely. So I kind of got impulsed here. Not going to lie. And as you can see, it was just very early, right? It never broke this structure here. So technically, I would wait for it to break this structure. And then I would sell stop this right here so technically this was not a valid trade but lo and behold again what i did was i did a break even here so i saw a breakdown i got, I got in kind of early it broke down or and broke down again and i was like okay well double and b we're moving price to break even came back on me i just took two break evens and as you can see, the reason why I took those, I mean, I knew it was going bearish, but I didn't know when. And so this is where patience ultimately comes to handy, y'all. Patience, patience, patience. Just go ahead and wait for it to actually do what you want it to do, right? If it comes way up here and it needs to break this particular structure before it's valid, okay, well, wait for it to break the structure. But then when you see some break like this, you're like, okay, break one, maybe sell two. And honestly, if it would have double and B here, this actually would have been a loss because it would have been very, very hard to justify. But at the end of the day, let's go ahead and yeah, we could open this up instead. Eh, it's not looking very good right here. It looks like it kind of wants to go up. But that's also a bullish divergence or a bearish divergence too. So it's a tough one. That probably would have been an L if I didn't get in pretty early there. So anyways, then it comes back up, price comes back up, it taps, 
back into that supply zone and we get a break. But honestly, there's really no double MD here that's clean. You can see just this stuff isn't that clean. Not very clean. You could say this, but that's really not that clean. This on the 15 second. I mean, would I have taken it? Ugh. Debatable. One to two trades a day, y'all. That's what we do. So anyways, those were my two trades for NASDAQ. And really, my two trades for the entire day. That's all I did. So let's just go ahead and do some discovery. Looks like on the Euro, we came down and we came all the way through. And it looks like we almost came down and, and tapped into this very small demand zone. We're going higher, but we didn't tap in, right? So we got pretty close, but ultimately we didn't tap in. And price just did what it was going to do. Came up. Well, majority of the day it kept going down. As, you know, as the actual indications all around were saying, right? <laughs> we see the percent change when before about to before market's about to open up. It's very high red. You know, we had like negative 1.8 or 1.9% on Nas 100 this morning and we had like point negative 0.93 or almost 86% negative 0.86% on euro. And it was just all red, a lot, a lot of blood in the market. So, you know, you look at some of those things and you just kind of go, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe uh, we're probably going to have a bearish day. So anyways, looks like we came down here. We didn't quite tap or break this structure. You can see the alert didn't actually go off. So that's pretty much debatable. Now we're at equal lows down here. But, I mean, is this valid now? Technically, it's really not valid. If we're doing technically, but then again, if you really wanted to do a little risque, oh, that's close. That is close, but you know, close only. I think it's pretty much equal lows, equal lows right there. Boom, taps in. So, I mean, if you see a break here, I mean, you can see this mine. This is not an analysis. I mean, you see, there's just so much money in this market right now, and I'm almost arguing that it could probably liquidate one more time before it starts to have any type of turnaround you got the green kind of coming down but i think you know we have room for one more liquidation if we're thinking about wyckoff so anyways that's pretty much what happened on gold which was just some trades bitcoin the good old bitcoin good old good old bitcoin let's look at the one hour let's see i mean bitcoin's been going up you know it looks like it's broken some some structure here yeah Broken some structure here. It looks like it wants to come and do it again. But, you know, we're just going to go ahead and leave this. We're going to let that be. Let's go to our stonks. Stonks. Let's see what happened today. Let's go to Costco. All right. What's Costco doing? You know, they got that great pizza. Delicious. Absolutely delicious, my friend. So, we down push. I mean, it's just moving sideways. Nothing really that interesting here. One hour. Let's go to the one day. See some. Ooh, man, Adobe. I mean, I guess technically it already did this. What is this? The 14th of September. Yeah, I mean, we already saw that. We should have already saw that. Let's look at AMC. Nothing. I mean, looks like <clears throat> we came down to fill that small little gap. There's a small little gap right here. Let me go ahead and cancel this real quick. And let's go ahead and move on. Cancel down here. So you see this very small little gap in here. Looks like we filled that. Hmm. I still think Airbnb is pretty bearish. If you're doing options or something, what do they call these puts? So maybe maybe you wait and give it a day and wait for a red day and then you go ahead and cause, I mean you could technically say okay well you know maybe it wants to come up to fill this gap that's what I would say on the daily and once it gets up into here then I just say okay well let's go ahead and confirm and see if we can take a trade today off of Airbnb I probably do I don't know what the actual time frame for puts are fascinating stuff Google yeah, I, I wouldn't trade that. There's more, much more stuff to trade right now. Facebook, nah. SoFi, nah. 
Oh, what was I looking at? Market Cypher? Yeah. Bullish Divergence. Looks mini. Looks like it could be. But I wouldn't trade it. <laughs> I haven't really... See, this is the thing. When you go back and you go ahead and gather the data and you see if these patterns actually play out in stock market, then maybe you could trade it. Maybe you could put in a particular amount and hold it for a swing. Maybe there is a signal. Maybe there's not. Let's see here. But you just have to be wary, though, too, with the stock market. This is actually real business, so if they actually have real business news, and this is where I would take news into consideration, right? If people are actually looking at these businesses' financials and they're coming to some type of conclusion, then I think ultimately, okay, well, if you see some of them setting up on a technical level, well, yeah, it could play out, but how long is that going to play out? Maybe people are looking to just get a quick little pump, and they're going to ride the fact that, you know, people get hyped and they like to go with the trend. The trend is your friend until the very end, right? Upstart. Yeah, nothing else really looks good. Let's see what uh, our good friend down here looks like. Yeah, like everything. I mean, it filled the gap. It came up a little bit, but man, that's tough. That's real tough. I mean, you could really say, I mean, you see, look at this. You see this little white speck? <laughs> I would argue that this is starting to curl over. I'm arguing that. And that now maybe we see it punch down into here. And if it did that, that would be a super, that in my mind would be a turnaround for sure. Right, if it did, if it did that, and then this is what's setting up, if you see it. Right. Oh man, this is lagging like crazy. Something like this, right? Because then we'd want to see price action down here come up like that, and then probably pull back. Boom. Something like that. That would be dope to see. And we'll leave that on there. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so, anyways, y'all. That's been the trade review for 10522. I hope you all learned something. Go ahead and leave a comment to let me know what else you'd like to see. Or just give me your comments on what you think about this type of analysis. What type of analysis do you do? What what strategies are you following? What's your trade plan looking like? And next, hit the like or the dislike button, depending on which one you deem is necessary for your own entertainment and edification and lastly hit that subscribe button if you want to continue to see more videos like this but it honestly it doesn't really matter i'm going to do this until i'm consistently profitable whatever it takes i'm documenting everything so y'all come on the journey with your boy b phil and that has been it uh wow i kind of froze up there that's kind of crazy huh that's all i got for y'all today though real talk so y'all have a wonderful evening night wherever you are maybe it's even morning and i will talk to y'all later peace